Hello viewers, today we'll be looking at Camdive Underwater Housing for Fujifilm XM1 and it comes in this nice neat looking box so let's uh, see what's inside it lay it on the table and talk about everything in detail inside comes in this cardboard which is very nice let's put this cardboard aside and this back here so it looks like this it looks very rugged and tough looking housing actually for such a small camera this is pretty good looking and the feel of it is good as well housing so let's talk more about what was in the box with it. It comes with a manual, which is in two languages, English and Mandarin. Beneficial for whoever speaks Mandarin. As well as uh, it comes with a little packet, which uh, has a spare O-ring inside and two silicon greases and a cleaning cloth. So that should do the trick of maintaining your housing and probably most important thing it comes with the wrist strap which uh, is very important so you don't lose the housing and the camera on the surface of the seat. So today we'll be testing it a little bit, the functions of it and just for this occasion we have a Fujifilm XM1 camera with a 1650mm lens and uh, also we do have an additional lens which is 27mm lens and uh, from our experience this one is quite good but full functionality of the housing you will be able to get from this lens 1650 because then you can control a manual zoom as well as the manual focus. So let's open the housing and uh, fit that camera into it. So, but the way you open the housing is here, it's this little latch. And the inside of the housing, you can see a moisture absorber packet which is always good to have as well as the moisture sensor you can test it by pressing it on it with your finger it gives out a visual and a audio signal to warn you in case your housing is, le is leaking so let's put the camera in and check the functions one more thing when you put in the camera inside the housing don't turn it on. You can turn it on after you put the camera fully inside the housing and close the hatch. So, camera is on. Yeah. We close the hatch. Make sure the hatch is properly closed. Otherwise, that could be a real big problem because that would cost you your camera. So, make sure you have it properly closed. And let's turn it on. There we go. Get it turned on. Let's uh, take a test picture. There we go. And uh, here you can see functions. Right now I'm going to set it to, to auto as it was. Here's the brightness. Press this. This is the video recording press it again it's saving going back to the picture mode and uh, right here on this things we have a focus and zoom it's a little bit tough to operate the zoom but nonetheless when you're underwater none of the professional underwater photographers use zoom 
so it's not such an important uh, option. So let's have a look at the menu. As you can see, all the buttons are pressing correctly. Yeah, that's good. And then press the back button. Uh, also, we can see the white balance, which will be you can navigate and set up as you wish. And like, uh, right now, we can try the flash. The flash just popped up. And let's see with the flash. As you can see here, it was triggered by pressing of the capture button. So it's working all good. All right, so let's try another lens. Turn off the camera. Take it out. We're gonna switch the lens. I'll put the house in here. Let's see. Yeah. This is a 27mm lens, which is quite nice, as we said earlier in the video. Now it is locked. Put it back in. So all the functions will still be working except for the manual zoom. So let's turn it on once again. And have a little test shot. There we go. So, as you can see right here, it's a nice quality image. So, this is a pretty good lens, but if you want full functionality from this, you're gonna have to use a 1650mm lens. So, let's go diving. <laughs> 